But that's an interesting entry point, though, because first of all, there's a public aspect of that as well, given the fact that the OFWs are the modern name heroes of the country, you, and at the same time, that money flows, hard-earned money that is invested back in the country. Tell us about how you use that entry point to get into the more refined and ar arcane aspects of the banking yeah. sector in the financial institutions such as Land Bank. The beauty here is that I was able to see the, the manual processes or the things that are current or are being done right now. But I think the thing that struck me was on how to make things much easier, more seamless, and how we could actually come up with some innovations around those processes. So I think part of that discipline is the part that wherein I can uh, be able to come up with some innovations mm -hmm. on simplifying uh, pr processes or making it more cost efficient or cost effective. And at the end of the day, it has to be customer centric. So the thing here is that it has to be the customer who should always be the one that is being, uh, in terms of needs, has to be addressed uh, squarely. Now, Lito, do you think it's serendipitous that you were working on an OFW-centered account wherein you were exposed to a very, very dynamic and very unique customer that mm -hmm. drove you to innovate on their behalf? Was it something that really influenced you in terms of making things more customer-centric? Yes, definitely. Because uh, I would always put myself into the shoes of a consumer. So uh, my bias would always be the, the one using the service. So I would always ask my, my, uh, you know, myself, would, it, would, would this service be of help to me or would this service be something that would delight my, my satisfaction? So those questions would be key for me to be able to develop more uh, attuned services that will be required by the consumers. From customer service, we get into the actual, you know, the nuts and bolts of getting into the fintech, which yeah. is what all the people, and especially our audience, are wanting to know. How did you make the transition into the global fintech industry? Where, where, what steps did you have to take? Well, uh, from the transition from the from land bank, from a government financial institution, then came my stint uh, with IFC World Bank where I was in charge of uh, Mongolia in coming up with a mobile-based money transfer service. So I think that practically the behavioral settings of these individuals, uh, regardless of nationality, would only point to one thing, which is service, which is a deficient, seamless um, you know, process or uh, platform that will now make them happy with the way they are transacting with, with you, right? So I think the, the global fintech, as we know right now, has been the emerging phenomenon uh, across, uh, across the world. I think you've seen a number of literature or articles written about it, but I think we should be able to come up with a single uh, proposition on what, re what fintech is really all about. So what, what is that thing that would really uh, bring about the, the, you know, the benefits of, uh, of pushing fintech? Talk to us about the transition yourself. It looks, like mm. seamless. It looks seamless so far. Uh, you went from a multilateral bank like the World Bank into Visa. W what is the carry over there in terms of one bank, a large bank, to another, a financial institution, and the services that you were able to develop in that setting? Well, uh, for all intents and purposes, World Bank and or IFC World Bank and uh, Visa would be in a way global in scale, mm -hmm. right? So I think the good thing with Visa now is that the fact that I worked with various financial institutions along the way, and in fact, that was the first time I was able to handle around 35 markets uh, within Visa. And I think that was also an opportunity for me to really see the various facets of the lives of those people who are living in those uh, uh, developing countries. So the exposure was good the for you to Especially in the key emerging markets. I mean, this practically my focus was, mere, uh, was really more on Africa and uh, in Latin America. So I think that has been a hallmark for me to be able to come to synthesize and come up with various ideas that would now be able to uh, that I could actually develop for the Philippines, for example. And yeah, and beyond the OFWs, you're also looking at this large section of the unbanked and all people mm. trying to get into the mainstream and having a financial institution get them in there. Now, I know that's one part of your takeaways, but I'm interested to see the personal takeaways because from those 35 countries, you're operating out of Singapore for around five mm. years, and then you decide to come back home. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what was the driver for that decision. Well, I think the ultimate driver there was I'm no longer interested in traveling that uh, that often, and I think uh, I have to make sure that I will be with my with my family. So settling now is important. Yeah, yeah. because it norm um, that time I was only with my family for about the most would be two weeks in a month, 
and, and by the way, I have six kids, and uh, I'm just like an OFW <laughs> myself. So and I'm, as a hands-on person, I would imagine being with family is just so paramount. Precisely. For you. So I practically have 25 hours a day, right? So I think it's more of I don't want to miss some of the milestones of my kids. And I think uh, more than anything else, I think uh, family would uh, take precedence uh, in terms of priority. But of course, there should be you should be able to strike a good balance between work and family, right? So I think it's more of um, giving giving it back to my family while at the same time being able to be successful in your career. It's certainly a, a great touch point to look at. Yeah. But having said that, you had a lot of lessons you got from the region and the world emerging markets yes, yeah. and global institutions. What did you apply to the Philippines and how did you set to go about it, given the fact that it was so young, this industry yeah. was so young in the Philippines then? Well, I think uh, one lesson learned was there is no uh, one size fits all. Uh, that is not true, number one. Number two, I think, is that I was able to get the, the good ones and get rid of the bad ones that I've seen in some deployments in other in other parts so of the world. So you curated your experience precisely. So what what worked in uh, in Colombia will not work in uh, say in Kenya or that will not work in uh, Tanzania, etc. But I think this some some of those uh, refinements could actually work in the Philippines and so on and so forth. So I think I was able to have that exposure of being able to see on a macro level the things that would work in some of those markets, which I could now apply in some shape or form in the Philippines. We are not here to disrupt, we are here to enable the banks and non-banks because we have a common objective of delivering the best possible service to our clientele.